welcome to my 2024 financial reset. So if you're new here, my name is Selena. I'm an economist and a content creator sharing life in my 20s. I recently bought a house and a lot of you have been asking me for like my financial reset to see my budget. So we're going to do all of that today. We're going to get into my financial goals, my current favorites, like the products that I've been using or that I recently purchased. And then also thirdly, we're going to get into my actual budget for 2024 as well as my January budget, getting it set up for this month and also preparing for next month. So if you're into these sort of videos and if you wanna see more from me, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps support my channel. Let me know how you guys like this setup. I just moved this little Gobi light from the home gym into here to kind of give it a little bit more vibe. We'll get into that a little bit later, but comment down below if you like this setup because I might have to get one of these for my office. The winter gloomy days, we need to get all the lighting we can get and mood lighting is a vibe. Number one is to do part one of my backyard renovation. I've talked about this before, but I love my house. This is a beautiful, perfect first house. I'm so grateful. But as you know, if you own a home or even if you have your own apartment, you want to make it your own and make it as nice as you can. And my backyard is like the only thing in this house that I feel like it wasn't everything that I ever wanted it to be, but I could see potential. So we already kind of started on this. I'm going to be filming a whole vlog documenting the backyard renovation, how we're leveling it out. And just the entire process is going to be vlogged on my first home diaries. So make sure to stay tuned for that and make sure to have your post notifications turned on. Number two is to increase my Roth and TSP contributions. So essentially at my job working for the federal government and for a lot of you who work in corporate, it's probably a 401k or you might also have a Roth available to you, whatever it is. I would say every single year, try to increase it. Depending on how much your actual income increases, I would try to max it out as much as you can. Now that my income has increased in January, I'm going to increase my contributions once again. And my goal is really to try to always have it around 20% of contribution. But now that I have a house, I have more expenses. So I also know that there's an ideal and then there's the realistic amount. So whatever your like realistic amount was in 2023, just try to increase it by like at least one to 2% if you can and increase it more than do. I am someone who's like constantly doing my resets and budgeting, so I'm always keeping an eye on that. So I know for a fact that I'm going to increase it depending on like my lifestyle. This is like a bigger overarching goal for 2024. I'm like a little skeptical, but I'm trying to like believe in myself. So my goal for 2024 is to earn $100,000 from business income alone. Gross revenue, this is not like net profit. So that's the goal for this year, we will see. Those are kind of like the main goals I have for my finances. I think because I'm at a place where I recently just bought a house and everything, I'm just so grateful and I kind of want to sit with it in 2024. And with that, I wanted to add a section to my financial goals titled wish list because on my budget tracker as you can see I have a wish list section under the annual dashboard and this is like all the things that I wish and hope and desire to buy in 2024 does it mean I'm gonna buy all of them absolutely not the whole point of a wish list for me in my budget tracker is to just write down the things that my heart desires that like if I lived in an ideal world I could buy all of these things but it's also just to have them written down to look at to think through and to help me stop any compulsive purchases. This is my list of things I want to buy or on my wish list for 2024. First car is at the top of my wish list because I really want that. Secondly is a living room rug and I've had my eye on this rug since I moved into my house a couple of months ago. I'm still adding it to my wish list because it's a big purchase. It's something that my boyfriend and I will have to make together so I have to be mindful of not only my budget but his budget and it's something we have to talk through which is how we make all of our purchases by the way since we live together now. Another thing is coffee bar. I've talked about this before in my other vlogs, but I love coffee so much and so does my boyfriend. So it's something that we want to invest in and something I especially want to invest in to have like a really nice setup. And I'm someone who always talks about shopping or doing things intentionally and mindfully. Like I don't want to just buy things just to buy them, just have them done. One example is my office. Like I have an office and if I wanted to, I could just like fill it up with like all the things and make it my dream office. But I have this $10 clothing rack from Ikea and then this little LED light is beautiful but it's actually after this video I'm putting it back in the home gym it's not even for my office and it's just because I want to like mindfully and intentionally 
put my house together to eventually make it like my dream aesthetic. There's no rush, that's all I'm trying to say. I also wanna get backyard furniture since we're doing part one of the backyard renovation. I wanna get a fire pit. For all these like furniture items, especially outdoor furniture, I'm definitely gonna be checking out Facebook Marketplace and thrift stores and things like that before I make any purchases. And I encourage you to do the same. You can find so many good deals on Facebook Marketplace, it's insane. I also wanna get a dresser for my room. Maybe a dresser for my office as well, since my office is ultimately going to be like a cloth area. So like my closet, my office, as well as a secondary guest room area. So eventually I do want to get a sofa bed, which is also on my wish list. It's aesthetic, a place that I can hang out and also work on the couch whenever I want to switch where I'm working from. But it's also going to be functional because whenever we have guests, they can sleep in here instead of sleeping downstairs. Also, like whenever David's family comes to visit, we'll probably need like two different guest rooms so it'll be useful to have multi-functional room even though it's primarily my office I want it to still be usable for other functions and like a place where my boyfriend can come hang out he definitely loves to come and play FIFA using my computer screen so it's not like it's just my room it's just primarily my office if that makes sense that's another thing from my wish list and then also closet doors is a big one this was another thing that like when I moved into my house I already knew that I wanted to redo our closets because the closets were not it y'all like they remodeled this house because of a fire that happened a couple of years ago but there were some things you could tell they just rushed through or they probably didn't care about since they knew they weren't going to be living here and the closets were one of them it's just we need new closet doors we actually also need to pay for like the closets to be installed which i did in my room i hired like a task rabbit person to put it together so highly recommend just buying your own closet and then having task rabbit build it or you can build it yourself they're pretty easy but I really thought it was worth just paying someone to do it because I was literally working and they were doing it and then after work it was done and it was just beautiful. And then lastly on my wish list for now is a coffee table for the living room. I really, really want one. I actually kind of want to make one. I saw this TikTok video, but I still need to like buy the supplies and then do it myself. And I think that's not something I be able to do until the summer anyway so these are all of like my financial goals and my wish list for 2024 so far and I'll obviously be updating this throughout the year during my monthly resets that I'll be doing here on YouTube but with that said let's get into my current favorites the first product that I've been absolutely loving actually brings me to today's sponsor, which is Fazebo. Thank you so much, Fazebo, for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I'm so excited to be working with them again. So this has been one of my recent obsessions and one of actually the first ways that I've upgraded my home office. I personally love the aesthetic, like the glass top feel is just so premium and luxurious. And also it kind of like lets in more light. Having like the light reflect off the glass top is so perfect on the front there's also three custom settings i personally set number one as my sitting position i set the second custom setting as my standing position the motor on this thing is very quiet which is really really nice because it doesn't make a lot of sound Next to the custom buttons on the front, there's also a USB port and a USB-C port, which is always handy to have, especially on my work from home desk, because I can just plug in my phone or like my camera charger, whatever I kind of just need to charge. And then in the drawer, because there's all this extra space, I not only have my like markers and pens and like whatever office supplies I need, but then I also have space here to put any cables I need to just be able to whip it out quickly, stick it in and just charge. I need all all the chargers I can get y'all. Having these extra ports is literally a lifesaver. So right now my desk is set to one, which is the custom setting for sitting to make sure I have like this ergonomic position. And then when I set it to two, it's gonna switch to the standing position. And then you just sit here and you wait for it to rise. I'm now in the standing position. Can I just say that switching from a standard desk to a stand sit desk, like this convertible desk, it's life changing y'all i absolutely love it and it's at such an affordable price compared to other standing desks and especially for what you're getting like the feel it's heavy duty so i highly 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 recommend this desk and that's why it's number one on my list and i'm so proud to be working with Fazebo. so with that said the second product on my list that i have been loving it's so comfy so aesthetic and cute and pretty and all the things denver modern reached out to me and they sent me these chairs and when i say that these are like dream chairs cozy aesthetic beautiful they're boucle never did i ever imagine that i would get 
such high-end beautiful chairs and get to have them in my first home like thank you so much to Denver Modern for sending me these chairs I absolutely love them I cannot rave about them enough if you can save up for these and have them as like staple pieces in your home I highly highly recommend I thought honestly I was a little bit skeptical like I think they're beautiful I knew they were gonna add to the aesthetic I wasn't sure if they were gonna be comfortable until I sat with them and I literally felt like I was sitting on a cloud like you know how they rave about the cloud couch this is like the cloud couch on steroids because it's easily removable you can switch it to different rooms if you want to change up your decor but guys it's so comfortable it's so sturdy and like as a plus size gal myself again i was a little bit skeptical i didn't know how it was going to feel sitting in it but the cushion is like soft but firm like it actually feels like it holds me up i don't feel like i'm just sinking into this chair with like absolutely no support whatsoever the boucle fabric on the denver modern chair it's 100 percent polyester and it's rated for everyday wear and tear it's machine washable and ultra resistant to almost anything which i can attest to because like i said i've sat in these in jeans and black pants and i was skeptical i've had no issues nothing has like stained it or left any like residue they also sell a matching veil ottoman that you can get and honestly i'm gonna save up for this because i think it would be like the perfect pairing with these chairs and just looks so good in my living room this is a staple you heard it here first so something that i recently purchased were these led lights for the back of my work from home monitor and I'm obsessed because again, it's already very gloomy and dark outside. Look, let me just turn off the lights so you can see the difference that this makes. It would be so dark in here without these lights. Let me show you, this is how it looks now. Let me turn it all off. This is the darkness that I would be living in. <laughs> and it's not giving you know what i mean it's kind of giving like depresso i need more espresso when they say lighting is everything i think this is what they mean so anyway i think the lights really just speak for themselves this has been life-changing and i only buy govi because govi is amazing it's on amazon i'll make sure to link everything down below but it's amazing the pricing is amazing their app is super user friendly i now buy all of my leds from govi on the app itself all of my different Gobi lights are on here and I can manage them all from one app and my boyfriend also downloaded the app so that he can change the lights however he wants whenever he's in the gym or like whenever he uses my desk for gaming he can also switch up the lights when you go in here you can customize like the colors if you wanted to change this to red for example you would just select it like I did there see how the aesthetic changed a little Ooh, that's giving warm vibes. I really like that. So this is life-changing. I absolutely love them. That's one of my current favorites. This one is kind of an expensive one, but so are the chairs, so it's fine. So I've talked about this before, but I'm starting to make like a home gym. My boyfriend and I think that it would be just a great investment because he works out every single day. I want to get there. I'm not there yet, but I do like to have a space at home because I'm just such a homebody, y'all. It's so hard for me to get out of the house. Plus, I don't have a car and I don't want to just buy a car just to get me from point A to point B or to like drive to the gym. So having a gym at home is crucial. And again, we're starting slow. We bought these two LED lights for the gym and it looks so nice. One of my current favorites, like I said. Secondly, the biggest purchase we made recently is to buy a Peloton treadmill. Listen, I was skeptical and I decided I'm gonna purchase one and if we hate it, we can always just like, you know, sell it. Anyway, I decided to take a chance is what I'm trying to say. And I knew that we would put it in a room that's kind of open. So we didn't want to have like a big bulky kind of eyesore. And so we knew we wanted to get something that looked nice, aesthetic, that could just be out in the open, have a smaller footprint. So we went with Peloton. Peloton classes are so fun. The features on the Peloton are so nice, but just know that I love it. It's one of my favorites. And my favorite thing about Peloton even though it's very expensive, like overall or at the end of the day, it's expensive once you cumulatively pay for everything. My least favorite thing about the Peloton, I will say, is that they force you to pay this $44 a month membership. But since my boyfriend and I are splitting the cost of it because we're both using it and we live together, it's only like $22 a month, which is like a membership. It's not too, too bad. But I will say it is my least favorite part because I feel like they should not force that. Like you should be able to access features on your treadmill without paying for membership, in my opinion. Another favorite thing that I have that makes it like accessible is the fact that you can pay for it over time and it's 0% interest. The last two things are skincare items that I'm currently loving. So the first thing that I love is this mist spray bottle that I got from Amazon. It was actually a home housewarming gift. 
from one of you, so thank you so freaking much. I love it so much. You just like spray it and it comes out constantly and consistently. And I've been using that for my rice water that I've been making at home to apply just to like spritz my face and like let that sink in a bit for some hydration. And then I do the rest of my skincare routine and I love it. And then lastly, I've also added this Aveeno body oil mist that I saw on TikTok. I've been using TikTok a lot more lately. If y'all haven't noticed, if you're new here, I love it. It's one of the best suggestions that I've gotten. It smells good, helps me lock in moisture after I shower and I have eczema. So I can't always use like body oils or sprays or scented things because I could get itchy. And this does not make me flare up at all and helps me stay moisturized. But those are all of my current favorites. Now let's get into my budget. If you're new here, I have my own website, www.selenatribuno.com. I also have digital products that I've created myself and I sell on there. And the two digital products that I currently have are my goals and intention spreadsheets. And these are all accessible on Google Sheets. All you need is a free Google account and pretty much any device that has access to the internet, you're able to just go on the Google Sheets app or go to Google Drive and access it. So that's why I really like it because you can access it from anywhere, you know, update it on your phone on the go. So this budget spreadsheet is my budget tracker spreadsheet that I have on my website. So if you're interested and if you want to check it out, I always have it linked down in the description below. And in the month of January, it's 30% off. So if you want to get it, if you've been thinking about getting it, now is the perfect time because this is like the biggest sale of the year currently. The first section of my budget template is my annual dashboard. So this is where you can just come and see visually with graphs as well as you can see like the totals written out for income, expenses, savings, total investments, and debt. So this is like a good dashboard overview. And then on the bottom, there's an area for financial goals where at the beginning of the year slash throughout the year, whenever you have these kind of bigger long-term goals that have to do with your finances, your money goals, that would go here. And then next to that, I have a wish list. And again, these are kind of like bigger ticket items that you hope to buy sometime this year that you want to buy, but you want to think about it. You want to do research on these things. You want to plan it out, maybe add it to your sinking funds in one of your monthly resets or whenever you're ready to start saving up for it. So the wish list is where you would put all of those items, set a price in your head or that works for you and your budget. For me, if it's over like $150, I need to think about it and I need to sit on it. If it's under $150 and I need it, but I still want to think about it, I'll put it on my like monthly budget wish list and then take a month or at least a couple of weeks to sit on it and decide whether or not I'm ready to make a purchase. And then if it's under $100 and I really need it, I usually buy it. That's kind of my standard and what works for me and my budget. That's the idea behind why I added a wish list to the annual dashboard as well as to the monthly budget. Looking at January, first of all, what the heck? It's January 2024. Where did the time go? I feel like it was just 2023 and suddenly it's over. So you're kind of seeing January and then in my February monthly reset, you're going to see the actual numbers filled out that I'll do at the end of the month and then I'll prepare my February budget in that video. So at the top, there's an income summary where for me, I have multiple streams of income. So I add that to this section, but also keep in mind, I have a separate budget spreadsheet and tracker specifically for business and all of my streams of income for my business. So this is my personal budget spreadsheet where I keep track of my nine to five income and the money from my business that I pay myself. This is not how much I make full revenue or gross amount for my business. I have a separate spreadsheet for that in order to keep my accounting different, my finances separate, and I highly encourage you to do this. If you purchase my spreadsheet, I, you could also easily duplicate the spreadsheet and have a separate monthly budget for your personal spending and your personal accounts, as well as the other secondary copy that you make can be for your business expenses and your business income specifically. And if you want to wait, you can wait for me to actually publish the business tracker that I have because it automatically calculates setting aside 30% for taxes, which is what I do and what I highly encourage you all to do. So anyway, with that aside, I know not everyone has a side business or like extra income, but if you do, that was for you. I separate it by paycheck. It also gives me the opportunity to come in halfway through the month and budget things out if I need to. And then miscellaneous income, Venmo, etc. Like if I sell something on Facebook Marketplace, or this is also like where I consider money that like my boyfriend pays me back for like groceries or for 
eating out or something, this is where I calculate that as additional income as well because we do go half on like groceries and utilities and things like that. And then bonuses. So for example, a bonus that I might pay myself for my business might be for a special occasion. So last year I went on a New York City trip for my birthday and I gave myself like $1,500 that month from my business income as a bonus to myself since I am a sole proprietor LLC business because I'm the only person like I'm the one employee in my LLC. I run everything and everything. Next to income, you will see a visual representation of how much money you have left to budget and how much money you have left to spend. I just love visual representation and it just helps to like see it. Plus it's cute. Next to that, I have a cash flow summary. So once you start filling this out with your budget and the actual amount that you spend, you'll be able to see your cash flow summary to see what percentage of your money is going to your bills and your fixed expenses, what percentage is going to your variable expenses into your investments and then also to your debt. So you'll kind of see visually and also the percentage will show up as well. Next to that, there's a monthly inspiration. This month it's Michelle Obama. I love her, she's a queen. And then getting down into the actual budget is bills and fixed expenses. So these ones are a drop down. In order to add more categories, you would go to tracker section. And in the tracker section, there's also more tools for you to kind of keep track of savings goals here on the savings tracker, sinking funds. Like this year, I need to travel a couple of times to Washington DC to visit my boyfriend's family and also for his brother's wedding. So I added an annual goal here of saving up $2,000 for those two trips, which should be more than enough since we're gonna be staying with friends or family. So most of the money is just gonna be for the flight and I'll probably use my points. So that's just like to have money to spend when we are there. I also have an annual goal here for a new car like I talked about. And then $3,000 is just for a miscellaneous house project or like the backyard furniture, etc. And then when you add your annual goal here, as you can see, there's like a monthly section in the savings tracker as well, which divides whatever amount that you put into this annual goal by 12 to give you the monthly allotment of how much money you would need to save or put aside every single month in order to reach your goal within 12 months. Since I wanna save up $2,000 in the next year, I would need to put aside $166 every single month. And then here in the actual like tracker section under the month, you would every month come in and kind of show how much money you actually set aside and saved. So let's say this month I put in $200 into travel, then this would keep track of that as well. And it would show you here like what amount you have saved year to date and how much you have remaining from that annual goal, if that makes sense. So this mainly works best if you, you know, make your goals at the beginning of the year, which I highly encourage, but you could also go in later and add in goals later. But just know that this monthly section is always calculating how much you need to contribute monthly in order to reach your goal in 12 months. So just keep that in mind. And then here you can fill out like any investments, which I don't really fill out because mine are automatically pulled out of my account by my work. And then this is the bills tracker. So this is where you would add any fixed expenses or bills that do not change or that have fixed amounts. So you could add utilities. I chose to put utilities and variable expenses since technically every month the amount that I pay for utilities is going to vary so it's a variable expense but some people like to put it in their fixed expenses since technically also it is a fixed expense that regardless of the amount you will have to pay this every single month like it's not something you can just go in and cancel either way it works for you this is what works for me and then again it'll keep track of the total of how much you spend throughout the year I just already copied and pasted this for every year, but I'm gonna go in and change it for my mortgage anytime that I make an additional payment for my mortgage. But this was just to kind of like show you and you can see like the totals at the end. So subscriptions, this is really important whenever you get this budget spreadsheet, if you do, to fill this out. I already pretty much filled mine out. Well, actually I did fill it out. But what I need to do is go in and add like the amounts for January because then once you have the subscription amount already in place, then it automatically gets added to your monthly budget. So for example, I have this annual subscription from Amazon Prime and it should come out in July and it's for $139. So I put that bill in July for $139. So it should show up on my July subscriptions here under bills and fixed expenses for $209 because it adds up all of the subscriptions that you would pay that month. So it's really nice. If you fill this out correctly, like if you go in and you fill out all your trackers and that information and keep it up to date, then there's a lot of things that are automated. It's something that I personally like to use 
and then the debt tracker. So this year I actually have debt because now student loans are not paused anymore. So I have two student loan like places that I need to pay back. I have my starting balance and then I don't have a yearly goal. My goal is just to pay the minimum of everything. I work for the federal government so after 10 years it should all be forgiven. So I'm not out here trying to pay my student loans as soon as possible. And on top of that, I'm pretty sure with the new save system, interest is not accruing. Right now, having the extra income for other things to set me up for success for my house, for investing, is more worth it than me paying large lump sums for my student loans. That's for me personally though. And then you can also track your income here as well, which is not necessary, but some people who have multiple streams of income might want to see kind of how much they're accruing over the year and like see it here separately. And then I have the savings, debt, and investments dashboard, which I personally haven't filled out yet because I feel like I'm mostly filling out my monthly and my trackers but I wanted to put this in here for anyone who again is a very visual person who wants to kind of see month to month progress that they're saving or that they're paying off their debt with or that they're investing so oh my gosh this still says 2023 but I can just easily go in and change this this is my budget for January that is how you add the categories for bills and fixed expenses then in variable expenses you can just change the categories here and I've had people tell me they wish that there was more variable expenses line items but the idea of this section it's not to write out your line item this is the category the overarching category which in my opinion 10 categories is more than enough because otherwise your little pie chart is going to get overwhelmed with categories and we don't want that and also every month the variable categories or the various categories that you have might change. For example, for January, I don't need a ride share category. I don't need public transportation and I don't need travel because no money is going towards any of that since I'm not going to be doing any of those things. I could just delete these and switch them for something else or like I did here, just put zero dollars. So I really truly think that if we're thinking of categories for what they are, which is like an umbrella, you shouldn't need more lines in my opinion. And if you do, maybe this isn't the spreadsheet for you because this was the idea behind the categories. Because let's say like, for example, dining out, or maybe this could even just be food. Again, the categories are just going to be a visual representation of where your money's going at the end of the month. And then down here in the expense tracker, you're gonna, you know, select the date, you're gonna add the amount, let's say $200 you spent out of birthday dinner you're going to put dining out. It's going to show up on your pie chart automatically adding up your categories down here. And then here you can add a description. So you could say like Benny Hanna's, I've never even been there, but it came to mind, birthday dinner. See? And then now you have the line item, like the very specific description of what that was. Because personally, I don't need the description to be up here. I like to have it because it's good to note it and to know where your money went specifically. But for me personally, Personally, the idea behind this spreadsheet is to have an overarching view and that's what this gives me. That's kind of the idea behind it. There's also a savings section here so you can budget how much you want to save towards whatever savings goals that you put in your tracker. There's also a sinking funds section which is essentially like a savings goal but for money that you're going to spend on something specific. So for example, for me, a new car, travel, and then there's an investment section, which again, I wouldn't personally use so much because my money is automatically taken out. And then there's a monthly to-do list. So this monthly to-do list can be anything that's related to money, which is most things. So there's actually some things I didn't add on here because the month is almost over and I'll be more intentional about this in February. But for example, one thing that I could have added was to plan two monthly date nights because one thing that my boyfriend and I have started doing recently, having a date night every single week, but alternating whose turn it is to plan and pay for the date. We're kind of like sharing the mental load of planning the date and also financially sharing the load without like splitting things and just going 50 50 because that can just get annoying sometimes so i would rather just pay for something myself and then he pays for something himself and we don't have to be like asking each other for money and then down here i have a wish list for this month which is the backyard renovation because that's supposed to take place this month david's closet because his closet needs to be made over like bad i already did my closet but we really need to do his closet then a bookshelf for my office because my office is like bare and again Again, I'm trying to be very intentional with it, but at the same time, like, bro, I have nowhere to store things. So that's another thing on my wish list for this month. And then my office closet, but realistically, I'll probably move that to February because there's no way we're going to do David's closet and my office closet in the same month. It's going to be too much. But that's why it's good to write it out because sometimes you're like thinking I need to do this and you do that and then in order to plan it you have to like see it and see okay how much is that actually going to cost and is that feasible. 
And then now since I'm actually paying back debt, there's also this debt section on the monthly budget. So again, you wanna make sure you fill out these categories on the trackers sheet. So here I have student loan number one, I pay $47 a month, and then student loan number two, I'm paying $100 back a month. So it's about $147 a month, which in my opinion is not bad at all. And my education was 100% worth it. That's it for that. And then I'm, we're also paying back the Peloton at 0% interest for $62 a month, which is really like $31 a month. But because it's in my name, it all gets pulled out at 62. So I write it out at 62 and then the money that David pays me back, I just estimate will be around 500 because he'll pay me back for, you know, half the Peloton and then also for any groceries, things like that. At least that's how we do it for now. But things could change in the future. Like the date night stuff change. This is like my budget setup. This is my January budget. I'm gonna update this in my February reset routine. So make sure you stay tuned for that for my monthly reset. And if you like those sorts of videos and wanna see those kinds of videos for me, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share with anyone else who might enjoy it as well. And leave a comment down below. What is something on your January or February wish list? What is one of your financial goals for 2024 or even for this month? Make sure to comment that down below. But with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you once again to Fazebo for sponsoring a portion of today's video. I love you all so much and I hope to see you all in the next video.